Okay, so I'm now going to do a run through the spear play we were training yesterday. And I'm going to explain all the important parts. The reason why I had you train with spears is that everything you do with a spear takes more time because um, when you use it to, to strike, for instance, right? Uh, because it's just a longer weapon. So if I have to bridge distance here with a long weapon because it has a long range, that means that um, I'm bridging longer distances. And uh, bridging a longer distance always takes more time than bridging a shorter distance. So when you train with these weapons, you have more time to think. Yeah? As opposed to training with a dagger or with a sword. Also, we have both hands on the shaft, so we can do things that we have to uh, do in order to bring forward the point. Look, the point uh, is not supposed to travel in an arc. So when I strike, I don't strike like this. It's clumsy and at this point here, I have little control. It's also, if you look at geometry, it's a much longer path to get anywhere as opposed to bringing this bit, which is the important part in the fight, forward in a straight line. And to bring it forward in a straight line, you start with this hand, drawing it down like, um, like a paddle in a canoe or in a boat. So it's basically like, a, like, like rowing here, like paddling. <coughs> Also make sure that you don't draw down and to the side because then the spear would come forward um, in a much wider angulation. It's harder to see for the opponent if it comes down um, at a much steeper angulation to begin with. Also this is a shorter route than, going, uh, than taking the um, longer route out uh, on, on the outside. <coughs> Here it is harder to see when it comes. It's also nicer to control for you. There's also an element of body mechanics here. Striking like this is less strong than striking like this. Yeah, because here I have a, uh, here I have more power because <coughs> uh, it's a tighter action as opposed to striking like so. Yeah, here I'm striking from the shoulder. Here the body is aligned behind the part um, that transfers the pressure. Now it's the fist, here it's the spear, okay? <coughs> so, steep action, um, moving the hand first, that's really important. You want to move your hand first because you want to be able to, if he's charging in, then you don't have to go any further than this. You want to be able to decide yourself how far you enter and sometimes because he's bridging distance very, very quickly, he's doing your job. That's fine. Yeah? Then at one point you could e maybe even retreat and you'd be in a perfect position against somebody who's charging in. However, if in contrast you would uh, insist on stepping, moving your weapon at the same time as you move your body, <clears throat> if now on the way now, in the process of going forward, you see, oh my God, they're charging in and you have to shorten distance. You will find yourself in a really crappy position. If you go forward in false time, moving the whole body and the weapon all at once, then you are committed to a situation, to a position here and you cannot easily change it anymore. It takes all, it takes all the effort it took to get here to get back. The foot is really slow because it has to carry the whole body weight while the hand is really fast. Right? Whenever you do something and you don't have contact yet, you also rely on visual information. That means that while I'm striking my blow to gain the center, time passes and I can use this time to analyze the situation. So while I'm in this process, my brain is working. So if I see it is not required to actually step, I can just stay here. If I see that he's coming in very, very quickly, I can retreat to make sure that I uh, achieve my original purpose, which is the original purpose when I enter 
with a blow into a fight, what do I want to do? Gain the center. Gain the center. That's the correct answer. Now, this is a detail that a lot of people miss when they're talking about uh, single combat. Um, when you enter to strike directly to the head, to directly um, bring the sharp end into his head with a strike, then um, this is a very dangerous approach because if the both of us do it, we have to get, can you come to me in slow motion and strike so that you strike into my head. <clears throat> you have to get fairly close to each other yeah, to do this. Okay, so he's in reach with a strike, I'm in reach with a strike. Okay. Also, the way the weapons bind, if you just look at it, if both of us do it, then the weapons do bind, that's true. However, now you were actually not striking at me, you were, uh, you were uh, checking the weapon, which is more clever. But you, you're supposed to strike directly to my head. This is a false example, this is not the way I su suggest to do it. And this is what a lot of people do. They try to hit the opponent with a blow to the head. This is what you do. And on the way, uh, automatically, our weapons will cross and thus there will be a bind. Now this kind of bind is pretty dead because we have very short levers here. If you take a look, the leverage here um, is very close to our hands, or the, the, the crossing is very close to his hand. So it feels less as opposed to a crossing that is here. Here, he has a longer lever, which makes him more sensitive to pressure signals as opposed to this. Here, he doesn't really know how hard the pressure is. This is one, this is one um, flaw of this kind of fighting. But the, um, the, worst, the worst one is that um, it feels a bit like gambling. It comes down to who strikes harder and also, if uh, if he tries uh, if he tries to strike into my head, but I don't because uh, because I'm thrusting at him. <laughs> so if he comes so if he comes uh, if he comes towards me to strike in my head, and I go to thrusting range before he gets into range, he will be dead because the thrust has much more reach than a blow that covers the line. So with my blow, I cover the line. Thus, there was a bind uh, in the false example just uh, a few minutes, a few seconds ago. But with uh, uh, with the blow, this hand is lower. This hand is lower than shoulder level, but I have maximum. I have more reach at shoulder level. Yeah, your maximum reach is always at shoulder level. If you lower your hand, your range shortens. So when you strike and your hands are lower than your shoulder level and that means that you need to get closer to the opponent so you need to bridge distance and bridging distance takes time and if you uh, need more time to get your opponent than he then that's no real option you put yourself at a disadvantage from the very beginning so this is why as you said we strike from thrusting range which allows for taking the center, taking the center yes and this is the key to all safe single combat. You want to control the middle. So if I'm standing here and he's standing there, then here's a virtual place, the center. I don't know, maybe like a plasma ball or uh, like in Harry Potter or whatever. So imagine the center. You want to conquer this place. You strike to claim it. And um, if it's possible, you conquer it. Imagine a castle, right? You ride up, uh, lay siege to it, you conquer it, and now only once you, only when you have conquered this place, you are allowed to invade the hinterland. Right? Don't ever do this without control of the center, because even if we, if the both of us use the correct range to start striking, yeah, and uh, then we would end in a different kind of bind. So we, we are now striking from thrusting range, so probably here. Yeah, here I will be in thrusting range. So uh, I, can get to, I, get, I can get to him with one single action. Don't do anything, please. With one single action. And thrust 
into his face. This distance is called wide distance, right? It's defined by uh, being able to reach the opponent with one single action, the maximum distance that you can cover with one single action. So even if we are striking from the correct distance, right? But now, we, neither of us controls the center, and both of us start to thrust at to each other. From the rain. And we're both dead. Yeah? Not <laughs> controlling this center means that you are on the path to the double kill. This is something you definitely want to avoid with a sharp weapon. So what you want to do is control the center. Your ideal fight, of course, would be that he's too lame. And uh, once I come there, you get in your hood, but then you start to move on, but let's turn your spitze hinten, okay? So uh, once I get to the center, his weapon is. I claim the center, and I already control the center because there's nothing to, to I have to deal with. So I can safely extend into into the thrust here. That would be my ideal fight. Go there, claim the center, and then go to the thrust. From the outside, it will look as if I thrust him in the, into uh, the face straight away. If it's done with proficiency and skill and um, the speed that comes as a byproduct. So strike and extend. But, in, but, uh, but it actually is a two-parted attack. And this is the one thing you really have to understand with all your combat. It's two-parted attacks. While it is still one tempo, which means one fencing time, one action, this action is divided into two halves. Safety, securing, control, and then, um, and then uh, com completion of technique and killing him. The first part is about gaining the center, controlling the center, and then you kill him. All right, now comes the run-through, the technique. So